I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a really long time and I just, I don't know what to say to make it make sense because it's so much and I spent the past few days writing this for this video and it still doesn't really make sense and it still isn't everything that I want to say and I'm scared that I'm going to film this entire video and when I'm editing it I'm just going to decide not to post it and I'm going to keep going the way that I've been going and it's going to kill me because I feel like I'm hiding such a huge part of my life like I'm, I'm literally hiding everything. Something happened when I was nine that involved another person that has changed the way my life has played out. It wasn't one event. It was something that happened and then ruled over my life for years and changed my way of thinking and made me grow up a lot quicker than I should have. I was around this person a lot and nine years old was when what I now know is an anxiety disorder started. When I was around 12 years old, it was summertime. We were helping my mom clean the cars in our driveway. And I remember that when we were done cleaning the cars, there was water rushing down the driveway and there was mud. And I remember walking up the driveway closer to my house and I had no shoes on. I was playing with the mud with my feet. And I remember thinking, what is the point of anything? Why are any of us here? And at this point, I was in Catholic school and we were taught that we all have a purpose and we all have something that we were meant to be. And I didn't know what that was. And I had so many things going on in my life starting at such an early age and so much pressure that I felt this emptiness and hopelessness and it never went away. It was not all because of that event that happened when I was nine. It was a million things after that. But there is one thing that's a continuous presence in my life that I know played the biggest part in why I had such dark thoughts at such an early age and why that continued into my teen years and why it follows me still in my life. I know what it is and I know who started it and this person also continues it, but that's not why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because I've had an anxiety disorder since I was nine and a depressive disorder since I was 12 and it's taken me about 10 years to finally get help. I started going to therapy three months ago. December of 2019, I went to a psychiatrist. She told me that I had major depressive disorder after one session and she prescribed me Trintilix, a medication. I honestly felt really happy leaving that appointment and really relieved because I felt that after dealing with this for a huge part of my life, I finally was gonna be able to take something that would cure me. But when I got home that night, I told my family that I was gonna start taking this medication and I was gonna go pick it up and they all convinced me not to take it. So I never went back. Now that I'm in therapy consistently twice a week, every week since September, my therapist diagnosed me with major depressive disorder and a generalized anxiety disorder. One of the biggest symptoms of major depressive disorder or any depressive disorder is feeling alone and isolated and like nobody around you understands what's going on inside of your head because you don't even really understand it sometimes. I want you guys to watch this and feel like you know someone who feels the way you do and understands. And I hope that you can see that I care and that I would never 
invalidate the symptoms you feel with your depression or your anxiety or whatever you're dealing with. I've been dealing with this alone the whole time since it started. I have told every single person that I'm very close to in my life that I feel numb about 50% of my life. 50% of the day, the week, the month, the year, I don't feel anything. And I've told these people in my life, one-on-one, -on -one, that when I don't feel numb or empty, I feel like every item, every event, every task is meaningless and pointless and stupid. I don't feel fulfilled by anything or anyone around me. And when I am happy, it feels like I'm trying to convince myself or I'm forcing myself to be happy. And in those rare moments where I do feel genuine happiness, it only lasts a few seconds. And then I have that feeling again like, this doesn't matter, this is actually stupid, and this doesn't actually make me happy. When I'm sitting down with these people one-on-one, -on -one, I'm telling them that after years of waking up in the morning and just doing your work and not having anything at the end of the day that makes you feel fulfilled or not have any event that you're genuinely looking forward to that you know will be enjoyable, and not going to any activities with any people where you feel completely calm and that you're just enjoying yourself and letting go. Not having that feeling for years makes you want to give up. The reality of looking at how long this has been going on and realizing that it's not going to probably go away and thinking that this is what my life is going to be. Those thoughts make everything so much worse. When it started 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you think this is just me being a hormonal teenager. This is just maybe associated with my period, my hormones. And one of my physicians actually told me that I had PMDD, which is associated with your hormones. It wasn't until I started actually tracking it that I realized it wasn't just when I was getting my period. I have extreme depressive symptoms at least four days a week, every week, for ever. And you start thinking, if it's so rare for me to actually be happy, then why do I wake up every day? Why do I try? When I finally told each one of these people exactly what I just said, but 10 times more information than that, and 10 times more personal than that, not one of them ever reached out since having that conversation with me to check in and see how I was doing. One of them actually forgot the conversation happened because I brought it up to them only a few months after and they didn't know what I was talking about. In my attempt to tell people how I'm really feeling, it was shown to me that those people did not care enough, did not take what I was saying seriously. I was kind of pushed to the side. It, it wasn't something that was important enough. So the solution for me was to just wear a mask and hide how I'm really feeling. Try to blend in. And when you're standing in a room with other people and they're all smiling and connecting with each other and laughing genuinely, you just pretend. And I've gotten so good at pretending to be happy that my parents, boyfriends, ex-fiance, best friends cannot tell 
I don't remember the last day when I didn't fake anything. And when I see your comments under certain videos saying she seems off in this video, she doesn't seem like herself, it's never those videos where I'm actually filming when I was depressed. You guys never know. I'm filming something after this and you will have no idea that I spent the whole day so far crying. And I do that because I want you guys to see me as someone who is strong. I want you to see me as someone who does struggle with things, but at the end of the day is able to pull through and is able to find happiness. I don't wanna come on camera and tell you how sad I am all the time because who wants to watch that? You guys wanna be lifted up. You don't want to watch someone who's going through something every day. But then I sit and think, but you, Alana, you would have wanted someone to post a video talking about that. When you type in major depressive disorder, you read the symptoms and you connect with those words typed by a stranger, but you're not talking to a real person. You have never heard a real person talk about the things that go on in their mind and how it affects them every day. And you need to make a video sharing that as hard as it is. For the first time, I actually have someone who checks in on me. This past year, I waited so many years and I've told so many people to finally have one person who can tell sometimes when I'm off and will ask me about my mental health. And I appreciate her so much. The only person, she's not my family, but she knows me. It does make a difference. And at the same time, she doesn't know every time I have a bad day, everything that goes on in my head. And I don't want to bring it up because I don't want to be negative all the time. And I don't want to be a burden to people. And I'd rather just be sad and deal with it myself because that's what I've done for the past 10 years. You start to feel like something is wrong with you because you're not enjoying things that you're supposed to enjoy. You plan an event, an activity with your friends, with your boyfriend, with your parents, with your family for weeks. And you try to get all excited about it and then the day comes and you don't want to go. And you force yourself to do your makeup anyways. And that still doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you happy to actually get there. You, you find that you're getting annoyed with all these little things and you feel this pressure to take pictures because now you look pretty and it's an opportunity to take pictures. You feel awkward because everyone's staring at you and you feel like you're being a pain in the ass asking people to take pictures for you in this area with this lighting and this pose isn't good. And then you think, well, why am I doing this? I don't have to be doing this. But for me, that's my job. So I have to be doing that because my job is to make content. So I can't ever do anything and not make it about getting a photo or making a video. It's hard enough trying to go anywhere and enjoy it, but now instead of focusing on being present in the moment, I'm focusing on work. Then when you're at the dinner, when you're at the party, when you're apple picking, or you plan something to do with yourself, like to take a bath or to go get your nails done or to get a haircut or to go shopping, go on a hike, and you don't feel the way you want to be feeling, you don't feel fulfilled, you just feel empty. Or that feeling of hopelessness and pointlessness doesn't go away. You think, well, this is just the wrong activity. This is just the wrong person or group of people. Why don't I try something else? Why don't I switch up who I'm hanging out with? And then you do that for years. And then you start realizing maybe it's not the activity. Maybe it's not who I'm hanging out with. Maybe it's me. I've spent so many years trying to figure out what hobby I could pick up that would make me happy. I've tried so many different things and nothing seems to stick. And then you're just overwhelmed with this feeling of what is the point of working so hard to make money our entire lives that's all we're doing it seems like 
if we can't spend that money on something that will make us happy? What is the point of trying so hard to make relationships work if those relationships we're fighting for don't even make us happy? What is the point of trying to please our parents if we never feel like they're proud? If it's so rare that we feel happy, why are we here? Why are we trying? I ask myself that every single day. I'm constantly trying to find a reason why I'm here. The only times where I feel like I do have a purpose and I have something to hold on to is when I read your emails and you guys tell me that you were right. And watching me talk about things like mental health makes you strong enough to report that and to use your voice. Or when I hear people say that because I look so crazy and don't wear makeup in certain videos, it gives you guys the confidence to feel beautiful when you don't have makeup on or to go in public and not give a shit about what people think of you. It's moments where my sister or my friend, my mom, anybody comes to me for advice and I give them advice and they take my advice and I see that my advice helped them in some way. When I was a nurse aide, as hard as that job was, any time I would make someone smile or just make them more comfortable, and I took care of people who were pretty much at the end of their life, that made me feel truly happy. All of those things did. And when you're constantly questioning, why am I here, what is the purpose, and you're on Instagram and you see all these bodies, all these outfits and all this jewelry and all this makeup to make you think that if you have this body, if you have this outfit, if you have this jewelry, if you have this makeup, you'll be happy. It's very hard to see that stuff and know that it doesn't make me happy and know that I don't feel joy when I get something new that's materialistic. That makes me happy for like a second and it gives me content for you guys, and then it's gone. It's hard for me to keep making videos about things that I don't feel connected to. When I do make videos about things that I think will help you guys, mental health, going through a breakup, when I show my most vulnerable side thinking, people will relate to this, people struggling with this, will see me as a friend, see me as someone who they can go through this hard time with so that they're not alone. I read your comments and I appreciate the positive ones so much. And there is some negativity and you hope it's gonna go away, but seeing it continue to pop up still, months later, I can't deal with it. Telling anyone to just don't let it bother you is like telling an alcoholic, just don't drink. Or telling someone who's overweight, just don't eat a lot. Telling someone with depression, just be happy. Just decide to not be sad. I've been doing this job for four years and there are certain comments about certain topics that have always and will always bother me. I have tried different techniques in my mind, different ways of thinking. I've tried not reading them you always end up reading them because when you try to read the nice ones, there's gonna be a negative one that pops up. I've tried disabling comments. It's not really good for the video because it's bad engagement and that means your video won't do well. And this is my job. So of course I want my videos to do well. I don't want to self-sabotage just because I'm too scared to read comments because then I feel like a failure. But then when I read the comments, they make me feel like shit. So it's really hard. It's not as simple as I don't care because I, I care. I am very confident that there is something someone has said to you at one point in your life that still bothers you and you probably just thought of it. I'm not just going to tell you, just don't think about it anymore. Human beings were not meant to be given this level of feedback. It's so confusing, so many different opinions. There's all positive comments and then there's one negative one. Do I respond to it to like negate it? And then some of you will say, oh my God, why are you only responding to ne negative comments? Um, the negative ones bother me. And then I tell myself, 
You can't control how all these people think. You can't respond to every negative comment. You can't back yourself up on every single thing. Just let it go. But then it keeps me up at night and I can't focus and it changes how I act in videos. I take hours responding to emails, private emails, all the time. I send you guys huge paragraphs and you guys don't see that because it's not public. If someone takes the time to email me something private, that's something that that person really needed to tell me. I respond to those more than I respond to DMs or to YouTube comments. I don't know what I want in life. I just know that a lot of people say it's okay to not be okay, and it is. But it's not okay to not be okay and never get help and not make a change. I'm not okay and I haven't been for a long time and I can't keep not being okay. I have to change something in my life to help myself. I don't know what that is. The worst thing in the world when you're depressed is feeling alone. I hope that this video makes you feel less alone. What you're going through is real. It's not something made up. It's not something that other people should judge you for. It's not something that you should tell someone and have them not take it seriously and not check in on you. Like you don't matter. You do matter. And if there's anything in this video that you're going to take to heart, it would be take it from me, going through this alone can only get you so far. You need someone, you need to get help, you need to go to therapy because you can't do this alone forever.